Affinity is making their software suite free for the first six months, and they're doing a reset where if you've used Affinity's software in the past, you can go back and do it again without doing the whole type in a different email address print. They'll never find me. But I'm glad you did. I'm Brad. I review tech for creative professionals. This video is going to sound sponsored, but it's not. It's, it's just the nature of what they are doing. It's consumer friendly, and that's just really rare in tech these days. Unless you consider me plugging my drawing course as a sponsorship. Bradsartschool.com. There's a link to my Affinity Designer course on there. So anyway. Affinity, you've clicked on this video, so you're probably a little bit familiar with what they do already. They have Affinity Photo, which it's like a Photoshop-like app. Affinity Designer, which is a vector app, has some cool pixel brushes and pixel type things too. It's like a combo of Photoshop and Illustrator. And then there's Affinity Publisher, which is similar to Adobe InDesign, like a print layout design type app. Now, unlike Adobe, they charge by the version, so there's no subscriptions here. They release a new version every few years. About two years ago, they released version two. That's what they're on now. You can buy one of these applications or all of these applications all at once. I think right now the full package costs 165. They have like a half off sale and they've always had a free trial. It's been a long time since I've gone the free trial route, but I think it was a month long trial. So their new trial of six months makes so much business sense. You're trying Trying to make a one-time sale, make a long-term customer who might buy versions or upgrades to that app years into the future. So kicking that sale down the road just a few months doesn't really matter all that much. If your business model is subscription revenue, kicking the can down the road six months makes a big deal. You're losing a ton of revenue. They also aren't collecting your credit card data at the start of the trial. That's just awesome and super consumer friendly. They could have used a long trial as a way to get people to just forget about signing up for the six month trial and then at the end charge you anyway. But this is legit, just leaning on the quality of the product to sell it. It could take a really long time to learn new software and replace what you're already using, especially if you're just, you have a muscle memory of how to do everything. Recently, I tried using Final Cut Pro to make a video on the iPad Pro as part of that review. It was painful. That is not a knock on Final Cut. It was just really hard to get used to a brand new way of doing literally everything. Tasks that would take me a few hours were taking me all day. I am not a video guy. I've become a video guy because I, I make them here, but I'm only like using a small portion of what Adobe Premiere can do. I've learned what I needed to learn to make these videos. And after that, I've completely ignored everything else in that program. So when I was learning Final Cut, there were a lot of things that are front and center that I'm just not used to. So I was constantly stopping. I was Googling things to figure out how to do them. I was watching tutorials, all to do things that to me in Premiere are just second nature. I edited about half of the video uh, in Final Cut. And then I realized, you know what? This is taking way too long. If I just abandon what I have, I could just restart over again in Premiere Pro and finish it faster. Again, not Final Cut's fault, but this is what happens when you take a program that you know backwards and forwards and replace it with something just a little bit different. This is really common. And I had every intention of really learning Final Cut, but then life happened. I needed to get that video out. I needed to then get the next video out. The last two months have been actually pretty busy around here. I think back to me learning Blender. I tried three times before it finally took. Now I love Blender, I think it's great. But the only reason I tried Blender three times was because it was free. So going from Photoshop to Affinity Photo, it's just gonna have a learning curve. That's a barrier your customer is going to have to overcome. And I could see someone trying it for a day and then saying, okay, I just need to get this done and going back to Photoshop just to do it. Next thing you know, you've forgotten completely about Affinity, but you know when you're gonna remember that you were trying Affinity Photo next month when your Creative Cloud bill rolls in. Expanding that trial means that you're giving people more time to go back and try it again and then again. Getting over that learning curve is the biggest obstacle affinity or any software maker has for their software to overtake something else in the marketplace. Also, resetting the trial so that people can go back in and use it again if they've already tried it in the past is a great idea. I'm surprised more software makers don't do that. Now I could look at this from a cynical point of view. They see a competitor, Adobe, struggling and they're swooping in to take advantage. Adobe has had a very rough month from their terms of service debacle to getting sued by the US government. I wouldn't be surprised if that's a factor in this decision, but at the same time, that's just good business. Cynical take number two, they were recently purchased by Canva and Canva 
Canva is just throwing their money around so that they can suck you into their ecosystem and then they can eat your soul in the future. Now, I've seen this concern a lot online. Once they pull in enough customers away from Adobe, they'll just switch you over to a subscription model and bleed people dry in the same way Adobe currently does. And I guess, yeah, that's that's like totally a, a possibility. The trajectory of publicly traded companies tends to be you make a really good product and then you slowly corrode it once you have locked in your customer base. We're living in a point in time where a lot of these tech companies are kind of hitting that rot stage where you have companies like Google who are literally making their product search results 10 times worse by giving you bad information at the very top of the page with their new AI tools. Also, they can make their investors happier. But this could happen with any software that is not open source. In a lot of my reviews, I say, I can only judge this product by what is in front of me now. So if they are promising software updates in the future, I can't grade that today. I can't grade it based on promises of the future. In my latest Surface Pro review, it uses the Snapdragon X processor and ARM-based processor. I said, if you rely on Adobe software, don't buy this because you don't know when they're going to have those ARM versions of their apps ready. Could be this month. They're promising some of their apps this month. Uh, Premiere Pro, After Effects, it's on the roadmap somewhere. I've heard this before. I heard this from Adobe when the Surface Pro X came out in 2019. Here they are, five years later, and they're still not done moving everything over to ARM. You should not buy hardware based on just promises of the future. Once those apps come out, I will regrade the Surface Pro. So that six month review of that particular product is gonna be really interesting. And I would say with Affinity software, it kind of works the same way. Actually, it kind of works in reverse. You can only judge them by how they run their business today. And right now, for me, their software is a very good deal, even before the six month trial. Maybe for you, something open source is gonna work better. If you need a vector tool, maybe you're looking at something like Inkscape, totally makes sense. For me, being able to pay for professional level apps, knowing that there's gonna be service and support and updates there, I like that, I appreciate that, I can afford that. So whatever Canva's long-term plans are, you're buying a perpetual license to software that you will own, even if the business model ever changes. And even if their goal is to make their software better and better and better, and then slowly corrode it once they get enough customers, might as well jump on the train now while it's going up instead of waiting for it to go down. I did it. I, I made a pretty cynical take by the end of this. I'm proud of myself. Anyway, what do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.